This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today for USVI News, I'm Emily Matson. In St. Croix, a heads up for drivers in case you haven't already noticed, phase one of the downtown Frederickstead road repairs project is well underway. This after WAPA finished its underground waterline project. The contractor recently started milling on Hill Street in downtown Frederickstead and milling and paving on both Queen Cross and King Cross streets has been completed. Now, this major road improvement project is expected to be completed by mid-December. And the Bryan administration is excited to see these projects and initiatives to revitalize the town of Frederickstead moving forward. This is a nearly $1.2 million road repair project. Motorists are urged to avoid this area while construction is in progress, which again is expected to be completed in mid-December. A St. Croix man is charged in connection to the shooting death of a young boy. 39-year-old Jamil Williams of Barron Spot is charged with failure to safely store a firearm and child abuse. VIPD officers arrested him this week and placed him in jail under a $75,000 bond. Detectives investigating the death of nine-year-old Cristino Gonzalez back on November 11th of 2019 in the Croyville Apartments determined that the firearm used was licensed to Williams who failed to properly secure the firearm. And a St. Croix man's charged with kidnapping this week, VIPD arrested 25-year-old Talib Suleiman of Clifton Hill, charging him with first-degree kidnapping. Suleiman allegedly forced an adult male against his will at gunpoint from the roadside of the Melvin Evans Highway. According to police, he forced the victim into his vehicle and then drove off. The victim was located shortly after in Lorraine Village Apartments with lacerations to his head. Emergency crews rushed him to the hospital for treatment. Officers located the suspect at his home and arrested him. He's in jail under a $75,000 bond now. Police are still investigating the motive of this kidnapping. The St. Croix District Police Chief Sean Santos Sr. thanked members of the community who came forward with information which he says led to this quick apprehension. Our coverage continues on the new developments with Liberty USVI here in the territory. This week, they launched new branding and signs in their stores, and Liberty CEO tells us there is much more ahead. Our USVI News, Ali Bourne Vanek catches up with the CEO of Liberty Mobile USVI and brings us all the details. There is big news coming out of Liberty here in the territory when it comes to branding, logo, future direction, technology and service. And their team is already hitting the ground running. It is exciting. Uh, you know, it's the beginning of a, of a journey. We've been uh, planning it, thinking about it, dreaming about it. It is a new logo. It is a new identity. It's a new beginning. And it, it's just, it's, it's a foundation of everything we're going, we're going to do going forward. So the logo is just one step. The logo is the image. The logo is what makes our employee proud when they go out and they wear it, right? So it does matter. But at the end of the day, it's just a logo. So what's important is what's behind it. So the exciting part of today, it's announcing what's behind the logo. It's our commitment. It's the people. It's the our goal, our strategy, our ability to do great things. So you put all the things together, we're going to have, you know, it's a recipe for success. As you know, we have acquired... Uh, company called Broadband VI, great company, done some amazing things on the, in this territory. And we are going to start building a network that's going to be across the entire islands using fiber. And with that, we're going to, get, we're going to give uh, high-speed connectivity, reliable connectivity at a good price. And it's going to create more competition in the market. And we believe you put all this together, it's, it's, it is the right thing. So that's coming. It's being planned. We're waiting for the acquisition to be complete. Uh, it will happen next couple of months. Until then, unfortunately, we cannot do anything on our end because we actually don't own the company yet. We have an intention to own it, but we're going through the regulatory process to, to get it complete. Liberty says they are super excited about all the new developments that they have here in the territory, that it's more than just a logo and branding. It's a commitment to the community. In St. Thomas, Ali Bornvenek. A major change is on the horizon for Facebook. The company behind the social media giant is about to undergo a corporate refresh 
with plans to rebrand itself with a new name. Here's a closer look at what the metaverse is and why some content creators are a bit hesitant about the name switch. Facebook is reportedly about to give itself a new name, according to The Verge. It's expected to announce the rebrand next week as the high-tech giant works to fend off a scandal and mounting criticism from regulators. Whether positive, negative, or otherwise, the associations with the Facebook app are, are hard to distinguish from a company that has ambitions to, to represent much more than that. And content creators are anxiously awaiting to find out how the possible changes may impact them. This is not just a small change, this is a huge change. Business owners like Julie Alma Taveras, who relies on the platform to find clients, are bracing to pivot. The fact that they are planning on changing and it's becoming a whole different business model altogether is definitely something that I, I don't think anybody will essentially be prepared for. Facebook also owns Instagram and WhatsApp. Brand strategist Jake Hancock says the name change could position the three platforms under an umbrella brand, similar to Google's structure, which sits under parent company Alphabet. For Facebook, that's going beyond social media and getting into the metaverse. I think this is more about broadening expectations of a company than overcoming reputational concerns. Back in August, Facebook launched a beta version of Horizon Workrooms, a virtual reality workplace for team meetings. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg said he sees Facebook's future in the virtual reality metaverse, which combines virtual and augmented reality in a new online realm. So Facebook is expected to announce the new name next week at their annual conference on October 28th. Meantime, former President Donald Trump is launching a new social media platform. The Trump Media and Technology Group has entered into a partnership to create Truth Social. According to a news release, Mr. Trump said he created it to stand up to the tyranny of big tech. The statement went on to say the mission of the platform is to, quote, create a rival to the liberal media consortium and fight back against the big tech companies of Silicon Valley, which have used their unilateral power to silence opposing voices in America, end quote. The rollout of the platform is expected in the first quarter of next year. In health news today, nearly one in eight adults in the U.S. have hearing loss, and a new landmark FDA proposal is aimed at improving access to hearing aid technology for millions of Americans. However, some people have concerns. Here are the details in today's Health Minute. For the first time ever, millions of Americans with hearing loss could get an FDA-approved hearing aid over the counter without seeing a doctor or audiologist. As a physician, I have mixed feelings about uh, this process. Under the new proposed FDA rule, hearing aids would be sold over the counter in more traditional retail stores or online, likely making them less expensive and more available to those who need them. While that's a big plus, there are concerns, according to Dr. Aaron Moberly, an otolaryngologist at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Are we going to be missing sources of hearing loss that are otherwise treatable or maybe red flags for something additional going on beyond just the hearing loss. You're looking at products that you're going to stick something in your ear that a do-it-yourself approach. Starkey Hearing CEO Brandon Sawalich notes some other concerns. Going to a local consumer electronic or pharmacy and picking up a product is not the ideal approach uh, for better hearing because you don't know how loud it's going to be. It, the fit, the comfort. So Wallach expects the proposed rule to be finalized in late spring or early summer. The public will be able to comment on the proposed language over the next 90 days. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The FDA says hearing loss can be caused by aging, exposure to loud noises, certain medical conditions, and more.